Welcome to another video. First of all, sorry for the very late upload. I'm working on something else, so you don't see me posting a lot this month. But even that's the case, I tried to do something related to ethical hacking. So this is what I want to share in this video. I wanted to try out a new distro. I've been using Kali for several years now, but I found it too bloated for me. I wanted something light and compact, something that contains only the tools I need. I've been seeing this a lot in my feed, so I tried out myself. As you just saw, I used different tools to configure this. In building the Arch Virtual Machine, I used Packer and Vagrant. Then the configuration inside is done by Ansible. Before we go into the operating system configurations, let's quickly see how the whole VM was built. Unfortunately, there is no updated Vagrant box for Arch Linux, so I created one for myself. Since this is my first time creating a Vagrant box, I don't want to publish it yet to Vagrant Cloud since there might still be bugs that I need to fix. And I don't want users to encounter that. In order to automate the Vagrant box setup, I used Packer. I have files for defining the Packer instructions and variables. Two shell scripts to prepare the Packer environment and run commands inside the operating system. Then files that adds the default Vagrant box settings and some information about the version. The installation works by booting the ISO file and running commands against the target operating system inside a root environment. In order to run Packer, we need to make sure it can connect to the ISO installer. So I created a shell script to prepare that setup. First is it makes sure there is a valid static IP address. Then it configures the necessary SSH parameters Packer will use. After Packer successfully connects, we need to define the boot commands to execute inside the installer. That is done on the Packer template. Aside from that, you also define here the URL to the Arch installation file, Packer HTTP server that we use to access the installation scripts, and the initial size of the box you want to create. After all those settings are prepared, next steps will be easy. You need to run Packer and pass some parameters like the IP address you want for your VM. Then on the next lines, you will see that it is downloading the installation disk from the Arch Linux URL, and it is waiting for the network to be available so it can connect inside. Once connected, it will run the boot commands as if you are typing it manually inside the installation menu. Then it will partition the disks following the layout I defined on the script. After that, it will temporarily mount the file system so it can access it and perform configurations. Part of them will be installing the base packages and other commands I specified on the shell script. After creating the box using Packer, I can now launch it using Vagrant. Booting that up is quick and easy as my laptop is running on SSDs. Once the virtual machine is up, Vagrant will run the Ansible playbook I prepared. That includes tasks that configures the clown user. It will set up the Black Arch repository so I can install the ethical hacking tools I need. Then it will configure my terminal settings. Final things will be to set up my editor configurations and my window manager. Aside from the nice wallpaper, first thing you can notice is the simplified status bar. I'm using a really nice tool called Polybar. This is highly configurable, and I only put the things I care about. First is the available disk space, so I can have a quick glance on how much I'm already consuming. Next will be the memory and CPU of the VM. There is also a network information to quickly see my IP and bandwidth traffic. And last will be the time. I configure this also to show some hidden information like the date. Now let's go to the main juice, which is my window manager. If I hit command enter, I can bring up a terminal easily. I can move across different terminals with command and arrow keys. I can arrange them in different order as I like. And I can easily move the location of my current window. I'm using i3 as my window manager, which is an old tool, but still fast and simple. I really like this because it allows me to control most of the things just by using my keyboard. Not unlike in Kali, where I constantly find myself dragging the mouse from here and there. Another thing I changed on my setup is the color scheme. As you know, my channel theme is dark with purple and blue colors. So I customize my settings to be consistent with that. For example, you will see similar colors on my polybar. Then same thing with my terminal colors. 
Base commands are using the bright blue scheme. I made the colors of the directory light gray to make it simpler as I don't want too many color variations. Then other parts of the command turn into purple. For example, if I wrap strings inside single quotes. Same thing happened with wildcards. Then when running commands using sudo, there will be a clear indication to serve as a warning, especially for those that can cause harm to my system. Aside from the aesthetics, I found also other really useful functionalities with this setup. For example, I can quickly launch an app using Command-Shift-D. With this, I'm using Rofi, which is an application launcher. This is a nice replacement from D-Menu, which is the default launcher for my 3. You notice also that I made the Rofi color theme consistent with my channel. I really like this because it, again, prevent me from moving my mouse to just search for an application. One of the default behavior of Rofi is that it will put on top the most recent apps you opened. I launched Google Chrome recently, that's why you see it, so let's go over it. You cannot see my browser here because I configured it to open in another workspace. This makes my current workspace free of clutter. To go there, I can click this upper left part of the poly bar. But since I'm moving away from too many mouse movements, I have a shortcut to quickly switch between workspaces. On my previous setup, I use Alt-Tab to switch between applications, but it is annoying if there are too many of them. So this method of moving your focus to another app is the best for me. Another thing you will notice on my future videos is that I'm using a different command history manager. This is a 2in, which is a tool that allows you to sync your history between multiple devices. It might not be obvious at first, but let's take a look at the changes. Bringing up command history is still the same. Atuan also allows you to do fuzzy searches. Similar with other tools, I made the color scheme consistent. One thing I really like here is the timestamp of the commands. It updates real time, which is not really necessary, but I find it really cool. Although you can have an Atuan server that can handle the syncing of your history, I just made it simple by storing the database file on a remote share. You can see also useful stats here that gives you a nice overview of your terminal usage. One thing that I find annoying on my old setup is about the file managers. There are too many mouse movements I need to make in order to open a file. So I installed Ranger, which is a terminal-based file manager. I can just stay on my keyboard when looking for something. This is really useful for me, especially when opening an image. Since I'm using a window tiling manager, the preview will nicely be opened on a separate area without blocking the other parts of my screen. Maybe last thing I want to share is a new plugin I discovered in NeoVim. This is called Twilight, which focuses only on certain areas of the code and make the other parts dimmer. I think this will be useful when I showcase code so the audience can focus clearly on what I want to share. Thanks for staying with this short video. I'll be back soon as I finish some important matters, but I'll keep in touch in the community posts and quizzes. See you on the next one.